Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Loretta Young and Charles Boyer in Algiers with J. Carol Nash and Jean Lockhart. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A few weeks ago, an electric thrill swept the world when radio programs were interrupted by the news that American troops had landed at Algiers. And tonight we bring you one of the most exciting personal dramas that this exotic city ever spawned. The motion picture success, Algiers. You'll hear Charles Boyer in his famous role of Pepe Lamoco, and the lovely Loretta Young is our co-star. J. Carol Nash and Jean Lockhart had a strong supporting cast. Algiers is a love story, and Pepe Lamoco is a mysterious figure moving swiftly through the colorful native quarter called the Casbah. Here's what Charles Collingwood said when he broadcast from Algiers right after the American occupation. The Casbah is another city, a city within a city, full of little houses and twisting narrow streets that run steeply uphill. By day, it is crowded and picturesque. By night, it is silent and mysterious. I got lost up there last night. There was no soul to be seen, only the green eyes of cats gleaming in the night, and the feeling that behind the closed doors and shuttered windows, there were eyes watching you pass. Mr. Collingwood talked to two American soldiers. One of them said... I've never seen anything like this except in pictures. The other one said, I've never seen anything like this, period. Of course, some people get that same reaction right here at home the first time they see Lux Flakes perform. It looks like magic that could happen only in a motion picture. You can't see the scientists who've been working in their laboratories for many years to make our product what it is today. They probably do more laundry in the course of their scientific research than the average housewife does. But it is not magic that makes Lux Flakes a success. If an ancient magician paid us a visit, he wouldn't believe his eyes when he saw the results. But I'm sure that the magician's wife would immediately become one of our best Lux customers. Now the curtain for Algiers, starring Loretta Young as Gabby and Charles Boyer as Pepe Lamoco with J. Carol Nash as Inspector Slimane and Jean Lockhart as Regis. The Casbah, a city within a city, full of little houses and twisting narrow streets that run steeply up the hills. I must have read those words somewhere, or, or perhaps I've heard them. I'm not sure, though. But they will not leave my mind. I picture Algiers as I knew it years ago. And the Casbah, the city within the city. And the man who lived there. Pepe Lamoco. My name is Gabrielle. The time I speak of was before the war when I went to Algiers with my fiancé and some friends. My fiancé was an influential person in French politics, and he combined, as he always did, business with pleasure. I remember one morning we went to the office of the Commissioner of Police. It was there that I heard the name of Pepe Lamoco for the first time. We are not interested in hearing excuses, Inspector Slamine. I want Pepe Lamoco. He is a criminal whose exploits have made him notorious throughout Europe. And for two years, he's been living here in Algiers within a stone's throw of our headquarters. As you say, Commissioner, that is true. Uh, Commissioner, you seem to be rather busy. Perhaps my fiancé and I'd better leave. We'll come back later. Oh, please, Andre. Just when it's getting interesting. There's no need to go, Andre. I'll be through with Inspector Slamane in just a moment. Very well. But uh, surely as an outsider, Commissioner, I can't see what all the excitement is about. If there's a criminal here and you know it, why not arrest him? Monsieur, you have only just arrived in Algiers. You do not know the Casbah. Casbah? What's that? Some kind of nut? Oh, yes, but a very hard nut to crack. You see, Pepe Lamoco lives in the Casbah. 
Well, then why not go in and take him out of it? You cannot arrest a king in his own palace, mademoiselle. As a matter of fact, I see him every day. You see him? But of course. Then why has there been no effort to make an arrest? To arrest him in the Kasbah would be simple, monsieur. To get him out would be impossible. And so our inspector Slemane does nothing. I flatter myself that I do a great deal in my humble way, Commissioner. I learn about Pepe. I know his habits. I study his weaknesses. When one cannot use guns, one must work with brains. I prefer guns. Inspector, we are going into the Casbah tonight. I will need 12 men fully armed and ready for work. And you might prepare a special cell for Pepe Namoko. Well, as you wish, Commissioner. Andre, I'd like to see this. Uh, uh, what is it? The Casbah? Yes, the Casbah. I think that can be arranged, Mademoiselle. I'll provide a guide for you any time you wish. But not for tonight, is that right, Commissioner? <laughs> tonight, Mademoiselle, I advise that you stay as far away as possible. <laughs> In spite of the commissioner's warning, I went to the Kasbah. The Kasbah I found was the native quarter. On the map, it's just a few lines. But the reality is something stranger than anything you could have dreamed. It's only a step from the modern city to the Kasbah. But when you take that step, you enter another world. A melting pot for all the sins of the earth. A jungle of houses, a maze of narrow passages and winding alleys, rotten with vermin and decay in the filth of the centuries. No one knows what mysteries are hidden behind those walls, and no one knows what crimes and hopes are buried in those secret courtyards. 40,000 inhabitants from all over the world live here. Everywhere there are terraces all connected together so that those who are accepted can move to any part of the Kasbah without using the street. It is like a fortress rising from the sea, colorful and dangerous. And in that place, Pepe Lamoko was at home and safe as long as he stayed there. The police! The police are coming! Police! Police! <laughs> Question these men. Find out where he is. You there? Where is Pepe Lamoco? Ah, ma, ma bafu, ma bafu. Now what does he say, Inspector? He says he does not know him. Sergeant, I see Regis over there. Bring him to me. Who is this Regis? Oh, a very old friend of ours, an informer. No, no, let him go. I, I do not know anything. I have not done anything. Let me go. Come here, my friend. Where is Pepe Lamoco? Pepe? I do not know, Inspector. By the sword of the great prophet, I have not set eyes on him in two weeks. For two weeks, I have not seen his face. Where is he, Regis? Eh? Where is Pepe Lamoco? At Grandville. No, Inspector, I do not know anything. I have not seen Pepe. Let him go, Sergeant. Yes, let me go. Let me alone. I do not know anything. And what did he say? He said that Pepe is at Grandpere. Grandpere's? Who's he? A receiver of stolen goods. And you know where his place is? Oh, yes. Then all your men to surround him at once. As you say, Commissioner. <laughs> A remarkable specimen. You know, you and I have the same feeling for beauty, Pepe. Yes, yes, this pearl belongs on a very special kind of ear. Like a pink shell with a little curl of gold hair. A special kind of gold. I can just see it. Pepe, let's get down to business. We want to sell the stuff, not talk about it. Ah, be quiet, Carol. He's trying to cheat us, Pepe. All this talk is so he can get a better price. So he can make fools of us. Yes, it's so easy to make a fool of me. Why don't you try it sometime? Now, Grandpère has dealt with us for two years. We must have confidence in each other. That's the way to get along, eh, hey, Grandpère? That's the truth, Pepe. You know, this was once my trade. I began life in a jewelry store. And when you left, you took the store with you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it became a habit. Uh, you know, I dream about sitting down sometime, away from the Casbah, in a great city where people understand these things of beauty. I'd make a collection of jewels like this, not just for myself, for people to see. In glass cases, with Max here in a uniform to take care of them. Okay. And me, Pepe? Ha ah, you, Piero, you, my young friend, you would have a uniform like a general and be in charge of everything. Oh, I'd like that. If you were there, too, I want to stick with you, Pepe. <laughs> Piero, I have great hopes for you someday. The signal! Get that stuff off the table. Leave it alone, Carlos. 
Who is it? It's Inez. Quick. Oh, Inez. Open the door. Come in, Inez. Pepe, the police. They're coming. Yo, look out the window. How do you know it's the police? I saw them. They're coming across the terrace, down in the street, everywhere. They're surrounding the house. That's funny. How did they know I was here? Here they come, Pepe. Bill, give me that gun. When will you learn to obey orders? Well, Pepe, I only thought... Ah, there, see? That was too close. Don't take so many chances, Bill. I don't want a bullet to come between us the way that one almost did. Pepe, they're at the door downstairs. You'd better go, Pepe. Across the roof. All right, Inez, you come with me. I want to speak to you. The rest of you, out the back way. I'll meet you later. This way, Inez. Inez, did you, did you tell anyone where I was? No one, Pepe. You're sure? Try to remember. Oh, why don't you believe me, Pepe? All I want is to please you. I couldn't lie to you. Couldn't you? What about all that time you kept telling me that you didn't like me? Oh, but this is serious. Oh, I see. So, love is not serious. Pepe, it's serious if someone told the police. I didn't talk to anyone. I stayed at home until Regis came. Uh, who came? Regis. Oh, Regis. My old and trusted friend. As soon as he told me, I ran to you. What did Regis tell you? About the police. He wanted me to warn you. Oh, well, that was nice of him, wasn't it? Well, that's what I thought. That... <laughs> ah, never mind. Here. Hold out, your, hold out your hand. I have something very beautiful. See? A ring. Oh, Pepe. No, no, no. Don't grab. It's unlucky. You want to give it to me, Pepe? No, it's for some fat old woman. Oh, let me have it, Pepe. Sometime I'll get fat. <laughs> but you would lose it before that. Oh, no. I, I'll keep it for a charm. Then you must keep your fingers crossed. All right. So, see? There. This ring will mean that I am always yours, Pepe. With my fingers crossed. Oh, Pepe, they've seen you. Keep down, Agnes. Pepe, run. They'll catch you. No, no, don't worry. You get back to Gampere's. They'll leave there now. I'll be at Aisha's tonight. Oh, Pepe, be careful. Be careful. Get off him. That is useless, monsieur. Keep firing. Don't let him out of your sight. Inspector Slane, will you help me, please? Mademoiselle, get off the street. Well, I'm afraid I don't know which way to go. Here, in this doorway, quickly. Thank you, Inspector. Not at all. But I might suggest that the Casbah is not a safe place to visit in the evening. Well, I wasn't alone, Inspector. I came with friends. We were separated when your men began to shoot. Good evening. Make yourself comfortable, please. Something to drink? No, thank you. Ah, good evening, Aisha. We'll wait here for just a moment, if you don't mind. Sit down, mademoiselle. The excitement will be over soon. You know how the police are. They like to keep everything in an uproar. A very profound observation, Aisha. Oh, then you weren't successful tonight, Inspector. Ah, uh, they will never be successful. They will never catch Pepe. We are too stupid. I sure. Be kind. We have only been trying for two years. Two years? As long as that? Oh, he must be very clever. Uh, it is not his head that saves him. It's his heart. A man with such a good heart could get around anyone. Sounds intriguing, Miss Pepe Lamoco. That is a matter of taste, mademoiselle. Shall we leave now? Must we? Good evening, Aisha. Pepe, don't come in here. Why? Oh, well, well, Inspector Slimane. How are you, Pepe? Pepe? Oh, so this is... Pepe Lamoco. We were just talking about you, my friend. Good evening, mademoiselle. Good evening. Ah, oh, your arm, it's hurt. You're bleeding. No, it's nothing. A flea bite. One of the inspector's bullets scratched me. Well, this is a very pleasant surprise, mademoiselle. I often see the inspector, but never in such charming company. Are you looking at the lady well, Pepe? No, I'm looking at the lady, Inspector. You've never been to the Casbah before, Mademoiselle. No. No, I'm just passing through Algiers. It's the same. But you will come again. There is something about the Casbah. Once you've been here, you can't stay away. Really? Perhaps you're right. Well, Inspector, your friends did a little better than usual tonight. At least they found me. That's pretty good for them. Shall we say a step in the right direction? <laughs> Excuse us, madam, if we talk shop. Uh, cigarette? Yes, please. They thought that was at Gampere's. Poor old man. He has no luck. They won't even let him sleep in peace. Sometimes I feel sorry for them. They'll never get me by these techniques, do you mean? Oh, yes, I know, and I've tried to point it out to them. Ah, for once we agree, Inspector and I. In the end, Pepe, I am the one who will get you. Really? <laughs> you hear him, mademoiselle? <laughs> He's funny, my friend, Dimane. He looks normal, doesn't he? But he has delusions of grandeur. 
He thinks he can arrest me. That is exactly what I am going to do. Sure, sure. Well, I'm afraid I have to go. Business, you know. Good night, mademoiselle. Good night. Good luck, Pepe. Ah, it is a shame, isn't it? What is? A waste of talent. An unusual intelligence. One hates to see him buried so young. Buried? Well, as good as buried and very soon. What makes you so sure, Inspector? I've marked the date of his arrest on the wall of my room. High. Where it reads black in the rays of the setting sun. <laughs> Inspector, I sent for Regis here. He has a very clever plan. Regis has a plan, and what is it, Regis? Uh, uh, well, Inspector, we have we've all learned that there is only one way to arrest Pepe, and that is to get him out of the Caspar. That is very intelligent of you, Regis. Thank you. Shall we send him an engraved invitation? <laughs> Pepe is too clever to fall into a trap, but some of his friends are not so clever. Get to the point. Uh, well, suppose... Piero comes down into the town, huh? Pepe will be worried by his absence, and he will come down into town to find Piero. Ah, but you've overlooked one little point. How do you get Piero to come to town? Ah, that's my plan. A magnificent plan. You see, Piero has a mother in town, very old. If he should be sick and send a letter to Piero, why, what could he do but leave the Casbah and come down here into town? He's a bad boy, Piero but a good son. Now, when he comes, we keep his arrest a secret, and soon, Pepe comes down to look for him, and when Pepe comes out of the Casbah, <laughs> we have him. Huh? Hey, are we agreed? Agreed. But how do we know we can trust you not to make a better bargain with Pepe? Commissioner, I am an informer, not a hypocrite. <laughs> Morning, Aisha. Good morning, Pepe. Oh, hello, Freddy. Better watch out, Pepe. Women will be the death of you yet. Well, it's a happy death, Inspector. Good morning. Coming my way? Oh, with pleasure. Well, did you get the lady home safely last night? Why not? Nothing unpleasant, then. Eh? Oh, yes. We had rather one unpleasant experience. Yes? With you. <laughs> she didn't think so. What makes you so sure? What is she saying? Oh, you know, women, they talk about nothing. I hardly listen. Was there anything special about her? Oh, yes, yes. Pearls. The color I like. Handcuffs I can appreciate. Platinum and diamonds. And she didn't buy that perfume in Algiers. What about the eyes? Well, they all have eyes. But all that silk and jingle. You don't see much of that in the Casper. Ah, but you do where she comes from. She asked quite a few questions about you. Oh, she did? What did you tell her? What could I tell her? Why? Did you think she might be afraid of my past? No. But she might be a little appalled at your future. I told her you might get off with 20 years with a good lawyer. Oh, no, no. You wouldn't want me to get 20 years. You're too fond of me. What's her name? So, you are thinking of her. Now, how could I be thinking about her when I don't even know her name? Her name is Gabrielle. She's stopping with friends at the Hotel Madeleine. You can visit her there, Pepe, any time. Oh, I see. <laughs> Thank you, Inspector. I'll wait for her to come back to the Casper. Are you dressed yet, Gabby? Andre just phoned. He's waiting on the terrace. Andre just phoned. If I'm out of his sight for five minutes, he phones. Well, don't you like having him so attentive? Oh, I love it. I've just been sitting here thinking that I'm the happiest girl in the world. Well, you should be. Marrying a man who adores you and can give you everything in the world you've ever dreamed about. That's my trouble. I'm such a fool. I go dreaming about the wrong thing. Oh, that's a terrible mistake. Marie... Marie, remember in the Bonton Bargain Basement, you and I behind the counter? Handkerchiefs, gloves, hoses. Yes, and don't you forget it. No, no, I won't. After all, you don't marry for fun. I didn't. Come on, Gabby, Inspector Flamaine is there, too. Inspector Flamaine? Well, didn't you tell me you invited him? Oh, yes, I'd forgot. Come on, Marie. There you are, Gabby. Uh, sit down, dear. Good morning, Andre. Good morning, Inspector. Good morning, Mademoiselle. As you see, I could not wait to take advantage of your invitation last night. I'm glad. Yes, we're all glad. Inspector, 
Will you tell my fiancé where I was last night during the shooting? You were with me, mademoiselle. There, you see, Andre? Oh, I never doubted you, Gabby. And whom did we meet, Inspector? We met Pepe Lamoco. Pepe Lamoco? Nice friends you have. In business, one cannot choose, monsieur. Inspector, have you seen him since? Yes, mademoiselle. This morning, very early. Oh. Did he, uh... Did he say anything about me? Well, in a way, yes. Oh, 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 I know. My pearls. Did he admire them? A connoisseur can admire pearls without neglecting the wearer. You're very kind. Inspector, when can you take us to the Casba again? Oh, any time you say, mademoiselle. Uh, Gabby, I should think you'd had enough of that place. Would tonight be convenient? At your service, mademoiselle. Thank you. Yes. What is it? Oh, I've been looking for you. What are you doing up here on the roof? Oh, nothing. What are you looking at like that? Mm. I'm looking out across the harbor. What's there, Pepe? What do you see? Home. Oh, you can't see your home from here. Well, there's no harm in trying. Pepe, what are you looking at? Oh, down there in the bay, that ship. Doesn't it make you seasick to look at boats? Doesn't it give you a headache to ask so many questions? No. Have you got a headache? Oh, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm thinking. Well, that's sure to give you a headache. Oh, I guess I'll get mad if you go on like this. I want you to get mad. Shout at me and hurt me. But don't treat me as if I'm not here. Oh, Pepe, you were dreaming about something with your eyes wide open. Oh, Pepe, I, I wish you would dream about me. Oh, look, Ines, you've always lived in the Casbah. For you, there is nothing outside. The Casbah is big enough. Not for me like being in a grave. Pepe. Can't stand much more of it. You belong here. You don't understand the way I feel. I've stood it for two years. Time comes when you can't stand it anymore. Morning, noon, and night. Same things, the same people. I'm fed up. I've had enough. I just want to get away. Do you know when you're going away? Never. You'll see. You can't do it. I am the Casbah. I'll keep you. Just try to get away and you'll find out. Oh, it's funny for the police to come in and try to arrest you. You're in prison already. You're in the Casbah with a wall around you. Stop it. And I'm glad. There's no world outside, not for you, ever. Be quiet. Be quiet. Oh, Pepe. Oh, Pepe, I love you. I love you. You will come again, he said. There's something about the Casbah. Once you've been there, you can't stay away. I went back with Inspector Slimane that night. Andre wouldn't come. There were just the two of us. At the time, I didn't know what it was that was drawing me back until I met Pepe again. He knew why I'd come. So, you wanted to take another look at the strange... Wild animal. <laughs> Strange, but not so wild. How do you like my cage? I don't know yet. Do you like Algiers? I never like traveling. It makes me homesick. Does it? Yes. If I can't see the same old streets when I open my eyes in the morning, I... Well, I want to go right back to sleep again. So do I. Yet I've been in the Casbah for two years. You are homesick, too? Yes, very. Pepe. Oh, excuse me. Well, tell us. Baby, the arrow has gone to the town. What for? I don't know. It was something about a letter from his mother. Regis went with him. Regis? Well, uh, let me know as soon as they get back. Sure. Hey, that girl you're with is all right, huh? Oh, well, I'll tell her you said so. Take a look at those rocks she's wearing. If it was me, I'd get them first and do the fancy stuff afterwards. All right, shut up and get out of here. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, mademoiselle. He was talking about me, wasn't he? Yes, he was worried about you. Why? Well, <laughs> all that uh, stuff you have on. Oh. Oh, that's very nice of him. But uh, you're not worried yourself? No. Not while I'm with you. <laughs> what should I be? <laughs> that, uh, that bracelet is really something. Yes, isn't it? And it hardly weighs anything at all. Here. Here, feel it. Oh. At least 20,000 francs, eh? Add a zero. <laughs> no, I mean what I would get for it. <laughs> yeah, you better put it on again. 
You put it on. Eh? Huh? Please. <laughs> All right. There. Want to dance? I'd love to. Your name is Gabrielle, isn't it? Yes. They call me Gabby. Married? No. Widow? No. Why not? Who are you with? My fiancé. Oh. What is he like? Jealous. Very jealous. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> too bad. What? Too bad? Well, too bad I don't know you better. Why? Well, uh, because I would slap your face. You see, when people laugh around me, I like to know why. Well, I wasn't laughing at you. I was thinking of Andre's face if he could see me now. Dancing with Pepe Lamoco. Come with me. Where? They're outside on the terrace. But Inspector Slimane may be looking for me. I... Well, you said you were not worried. Come outside. All right. Is that the harbor down there? Here's the harbor. All the ships that leave Algiers. The ships that go home. Where is your home? Any place in the world except the Casbah. I know what you mean. Any place where there are lights. Yes, lights and music and lovely women laughing. Walking on the boulevard. In the spring. The smell of the first flowers in the city park. Yes, the theaters, the cafes, the subway. Will you ever leave here? No. But you'll never be happy here. Perhaps. It all depends. No, oh, I, I... I must go now. No, not yet. Yes, I must. It's late. I'll come back again some other time. When? Tomorrow. Well, how can I be sure? I never break a promise. Now let me go. Why should I? Because I asked you to. Well, say... Say please. You're very rude. Am I? Tomorrow, I'll be expecting you. Here. Charles Boyer and Loretta Young return in a moment for Act Two of Algiers. And now, I, I hope you're feeling strong because I've asked Sally to read you some instructions for washing stockings, published in 1872. Shake together half a pint of gin, two ounces of soft soap, and two ounces of honey. Wet a sponge and rub the fabric with the foregoing mixture. Then, wash through two waters in which you have put ox gall to brighten colors and prevent running. Oh, goodness, Mr. Kennedy. Do you mean people really did things like that to their stockings? Guess they did, Sally, back in 1872. There weren't any Lux Flakes then, you know. Well, even today, some people treat their stockings pretty badly when they wash them, rub them with cake soap, or use strong alkaline soap. And then they wonder why they wear out so quickly. The reason is that those things weaken stocking elasticity. Then when you put any kind of strain on your stockings, the threads are apt to break into runs instead of stretching. Just the way an old dried-out rubber band breaks when you pull it. You guard that important quality of elasticity when you luck stockings. For luck flakes are very gentle. They do a quick and thorough cleansing job, but do it very safely without weakening elasticity. Stockings last longer, fit better, too, when you lux them after every wearing. Get the thrifty big box of Lux Flakes first thing tomorrow and give your stockings this gentle care that experts advise. Over 90% of the makers of stockings, makers of rayon, nylon, silk, cotton, and wool, advise Lux Flakes. We pause now for station identification. Act Two of Algiers, starring Charles Boyer as Pepe Lamoco and Loretta Young as Gabby, with Jean Lockhart as Regis and J. Carroll Nash as Inspector Slimane.
We stood there for what seemed like hours, Pepe Lamoco and I, on that terrace above the Casbah. I couldn't see him in the dark, but I heard his quick breath and felt the hard strength of his hand upon my arm. Remember your promise. I will. I told you. I'll come again tomorrow. Pepe! Pepe! Who is that? Oh, Pepe. Pepe, quick. What do you want? Oh, it's Piero. He's come back from the town. He's been shot. What, what are you saying, Phil? They tried to arrest him. He's been shot. Where is he? Take me to him. Take me to him. Phil, what happened? Where is he? Who? Regis. He sent me there. Where is he? Carlos! Carlos, help me here. Take him to Asia. Lean on me, Piero. They got me, Pepe. The police. I wouldn't listen to you. Highness, go with you. I'm going to find Regis. The back stair, Highness. Mademoiselle. Yeah, yes, Inspector. Oh, I... I have been waiting. Are you alone? Yes. But Pepe is growing quite impolite. Has something happened? Well, there was a man who... who... There was some business he had to attend to. Will you take me back, please, Inspector? <laughs> Sit down. You were fond of Pio, weren't you, Regis? Oh, I was. I, I am fond of him. Where is he now? I tell you, I, I do not know. Please, Pepe, let me go. No, no. You don't want to leave before he gets back. You want to know why he's been detained, don't you? I do not know anything about Piero, Pepe. You know me. You know I'm all right. Tell me you do. I, uh, last night, I was the one who came to warn you. Yes, you were the one. <coughs> we have Piero here. Piero? Piero! Bring him in. Put your arm around me, Piero. Oh. Where is he? No, 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 Piero. Don't shoot me. I'm your friend. Don't shoot me. Piero, no! Carlos. Carlos, hold my arm. Steady. No! Now, no. Piero. No, no, please. No, don't. Don't, don't, please. Don't, don't. No. You sent me oh. down there. Oh. And now, oh. now, you pay. You kill. Kill. Dead. You killed him, Regis. No! Or I'll finish what he started. No! No, don't! Don't kill me! No! Well? Well, Inspector? I have just come from the cemetery, Pepe. It is finished. I followed the custom of your people, a handful of earth on the body and flowers to make him feel at home in such a strange place. It is hard not to be able to go down to say goodbye to your friend on his last journey. Pio. Pio is dead. There is no sense to it. I wasn't even there. Pepe, I know how you feel. You're a prisoner in the Kasbah. But a day will come when you'll go out of the Kasbah in spite of them all. I'll get out whenever I wish. When you go, you'll go quietly. The way Piero went, feet first. All right, all right. Tell me. How is she? She? You know. Gabby. I am afraid you won't see her again. But... The last visit was a little too much for her. She got a bad impression of the Kasbah. It is a pity. <laughs> Sit down. Please sit down. All day long you've walked back and forth, back and forth. Please, Pepe. Sure. Come on, Pepe. Sit down. Pepe, my son. Why are you staring at me? I'm sick of looking at you. Get out of here. Get out! I know what it is. You're thinking of that girl, but she's never coming back. She told me last night, and today I went to the terrace. She wasn't there. She'll never be there. Never coming back. I told you to get those jewels. Get him right in the palm oh, of your hand. Stop it, stop it. Your friends have no tact, my dear Pepe. I know how it pains you to live among this cattle. They can't keep me here. I'm free. Free to go. I'm sick of it, all of you. I'm sick of listening to you. I'm sick of looking at you. I'll get out when I feel like it. And none of you can stop me. Pepe, listen to me. Don't go near the town. I don't need your advice, none of you. I'm free to do as I please. Free, do you hear that? You're walking into a trap. You know better. They can't touch me. I'm going down. When I please, I said. And when I please is now. Get out of my way. Oh, baby, come back. Pepe. 
Pepe is leaving the Casbah. He's leaving the Casbah. Pepe Lemoko is going out. Oh, Pepe. Not bad. He's going out. Pepe's going out. Pepe! Out of my way, all of you. I'm going out, you hear? I'm going out. Oh, Pepe. Pepe, wait. Don't go. She's here, Pepe. I saw her. She's waiting for you. What? You told me she wouldn't come again. I lied to you, Pepe. I lied to you. Forgive me. Where is she? You're so quiet. But I'm looking at you. I can't speak when I do that. When you met me tonight, you were very strange. Did you think I wasn't coming back? Well, I was afraid you were. You're beautiful. That's easy to say, isn't it? But what I'm telling you is different, see? For me, for me, you're more than that. For two years, I've been lost. Like walking in my sleep. Suddenly I wake up, that's you. You know what you are to me? You're all the world outside. You're all those lights and music we were speaking of. With you, I escape, see? Do you know, do you know what you remind me of? The subway. Close your eyes. This. Can you hear it? <laughs> That's my heart beating. Does it go like a subway train? Oh, much better. Look, you're all silk and you jingle when you walk. And with all that, you make me think of the subway. Isn't that funny? Tell me, what did you do before? Before what? Well, before the, the jewels. I wanted them. What will you do now? I will marry Andre. I'll have more jewels and more and more until I sparkle like the sky up here. And I'll jingle so loud that you'll still hear me in the castle no matter where I may be. Is that what you want? What will you do, Gibby? You know what I'll do. I'll come to the Casbah tomorrow morning. And the day after. And the day after that. But suppose you don't come. Suppose I don't. Can't you ever get away from here? No, I'm caught. Like a bear in a hole. Dark sparking. Hunters all around. No way out of it. Do you like that? Maybe it's lucky for you. I don't like it. And it's not lucky. Now, Gabby, listen. If you don't come back, I might do anything. I might go down to your hotel to get you. Oh, no, don't. Don't, Pippi. You know what would happen if you did. And you know what would happen to me. Stay here, Pippi. Never leave the Casbah. Do you hear me? Tomorrow, then. I never break a promise. Hello. Hello, Commissioner Janvier. This is Inspector Slimane. I believe we have a way to bring Pepe Lamoco from the Casbah, Commissioner. Yes, I believe I can guarantee it. I always told Pepe that women would be the death of him. Sit down, Inspector. Uh, what was it you wanted to see me about? Monsieur, it is about your fiancé. My fiancé? My mission is rather a delicate one, but necessary. I merely wish to suggest that your fiancé is a little too fond of, shall we say, the local color of the Casbah. What is all this? The Casbah is hardly the place for a woman alone. She attracts too much attention. Monsieur, she must not return to the Casbah. I understand. Will you wait here, please? I'll speak to her. Come in. Gabby, I've got to speak to you. It's... Oh, are you going out? It looks that way. Where are you going? For a walk. But where? In the park. What park? Will you please give me a sensible answer? Then ask me a sensible question. Where could I go? I don't know anyone in Algiers. I just walk straight ahead. And where does that take you? I find that out when I get there. Not today you won't because you're not going. Oh, yes, I am, Andre. Your hotel bores me. Goodbye. Uh, wait. I know where you're going, Gabby. Do you? Well? You're going to the Casbah. Well? You go there every day. Do I? To meet Pepe Lamoco. Oh, so you've been spying on me, Andre, haven't you? You're going to be my wife, Well, you Daddy. don't make it a very present prospect. I won't permit you to behave like this. You won't permit me. Andre, I'm very glad you said that. 
Very glad indeed. What do you mean? Now, look here. I'm going to be honest with you. Andre, why do you think I'm marrying you? Look at yourself. And then look at me. I've never lied to you. I told you I didn't love you when you asked me. And you thought it was all right then. Well, until we are married, I'll do as I please. That's fair enough, isn't it? I forbid you to go. Do you understand that? Yes, I think so. I'll be back this evening. Gabby, if you go now, there'll be no use in your coming back. All right. Goodbye, Andre. Gabby, don't do it. Come back, Gabby. Don't do it. Please, Gabby. No. Do not do it, mademoiselle. Inspector, what did you say? I also ask you not to go to the Casbah. Why? Why do you ask me? Your fiancé was only trying to spare you. He did not want to tell you the truth. You see, an attempt was made to capture Pepe Lamoco this afternoon. In a sense, it was successful. You mean he, he was taken? Pepe Lamoco was captured? Not alive, mademoiselle. Pepe Lamoco was killed. After a brief intermission, we'll hear Act Three of Algiers, starring Loretta Young and Charles Boyer. Now, have you been hoping for a real old-fashioned white Christmas this year? Well, here's a way you can make your own. Make beautiful, real-looking snow for your tree and other Christmas decorations with Lux Flakes. You can bring the beauty of the snow-covered woods right into your home for the whole holiday season with this lovely, long-lasting Lux Snow. It's easy and so inexpensive to make, and specially appropriate this year when wartime needs have cut down the supply of ornaments. Here's how you make it. Empty a large box of Lux Flakes into a big bowl or dishpan. Gradually add to it two cups of warm water and beat it with an egg beater till it looks like thick whipped cream. Then take handfuls of the whipped up snow and spread it with your fingers along the branches of your tree. A way to add color to your tree is to tie the ends of the branches with little ribbon bows in rainbow colors. The white Lux snow sets off the colors of the ribbons or used just by itself, it's refreshingly simple and lovely. Try it on the wreaths in your windows, too, and on pine branches laid on a mantel or table, or standing in a low vase as a centerpiece. The snow-covered branches will be doubly lovely if you put them where they'll be reflected in a mirror. Remember, to make Lux snow, use two cups of warm water to one large box of Lux flakes. Beat with an egg beater till you get a mixture like thick whipped cream that you can spread with your fingers along the branches. Ask for printed directions from your dealer when you buy your supply of Lux Flakes. Now our producer, Mr. DeMille. Loretta Young and I have discovered a secret about Charles Boyer. We'll tell you about it after the play. Now the curtain rises on the third act of Algiers, starring Loretta Young and Charles Boyer, with J. Carroll Nash and Jean Lockhart. Pepe was not dead, but I didn't know it then. I didn't know it until perhaps a year later when I received a letter from Inspector Semaine. In it, he told me of his plan to bring Pepe out of the Cosmo. He told me how Pepe waited for me at our meeting place on the terrace waited in vain, hour after hour. And then, heart sick and weary and bitter, returned to his room in the casa to pace the floor until morning. Hello, baby. What's the matter? Yesterday you were singing. Why don't you sing now? To yourself, I'm going into the town. The town? What for? I'm like you. I'm bored. So when are you going? Now. Right, Will you do me a favor? Sure, what? I want you to deliver a letter for me. Wait, I'll write it now. Oh, okay, I get the idea. Maybe I don't look like Cupid, but I'll manage. Where's she staying? What hotel? The Madeline. You want to deliver in person? Maybe I can't get to see her. Well, go to the servant's entrance. Give someone a good tip and tell them you've got to have an answer. Don't worry, I'll get it. I'll be back in two hours.
While Pepe waited to hear from me, I waited too, but for what I didn't know. From the hotel window, I stood looking toward the Casbah high on the hill, the city within the city, which now held Pepe Lamoco forever. Hello? Yes, this is Andre Hero. Oh, yes. Uh, what boat is that? The Ville d'Angier at six this evening. Yes, make the reservations, please. Well, Gabby, are you sailing with me? If you want me to, yes. You know I want you to. Even after what I told you yesterday. You were excited, Gabby. You didn't know what you were saying. Oh, but I did. I've never thought so clearly in all my life, Andre. I've never been so sure of what I wanted. And now it's gone. Gabby, I won't pretend you haven't hurt me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you, Andre. But I still don't understand. This man, this Pepe Lamoco, what could he have meant to you? I could never make you understand that. Because I don't understand it myself. I only know that when I was with him, I never wanted to leave. And when I was away from him, I just didn't live until I saw him again. Gabby. I was going to meet him this morning. He'd hold out his hand to me and smile. And we'd climb up to the terrace above the Casbah and look out across the harbor. And then I'd be happy with him. That's all I know. I'd be happy with him. Betty? Oh, here. Is Carlos with you? No, it's Larby, Pepe. Uh, He's just come from the town. Pepe, I've got to speak to you. What do you want? Pepe, the police have taken Carlos. What? They arrested him in the town. How do you know? I saw him there, Pepe. Yes? How much did you sell him for? Would I be here if I'd sold him? Go on. What did you have to do with it? I was at the police station when they brought Carlos in. He gave me a letter, the one you had given him. He told me to take it to the hotel. So, you went to the hotel with a letter? I did it for you, Pepe. Well, did you get it? What? The answer. Oh, she wanted to write to you, but she couldn't. She's being closely watched. But she expects you this morning. You can go down without any risk. Go to the service entrance in the back of the hotel. You're not going down, Pepe. You can't. Shut up. Go on, Larby. Well, that's all, Pepe. She's waiting for you. Well, uh, I'll have to leave. Oh, wait. Wait. You said uh, Gabby could not write because she was watched. Yes, Pepe. But uh, in a little while, she'll be able to see me. At the back of the hotel, yes. <laughs> That's funny. Well, he's going to be away. Oh, I see, I see. But why couldn't she write to me? Uh, because uh, because he was there then. Then uh, how could she talk to you? Oh, oh because... Eh? Uh, because you don't know. Pepe. Now something else. Do you think Carlos is fool enough to give you my letter? But you wrote a letter. Do you think me so stupid as to believe he would give it to you? But, Pepe, I give you my word. Gabby couldn't write, but she could talk to you. Yes. <laughs> For a woman who is so closely watched, it's funny the way she can do things. Now I've left enough. Do you hear me? I'm full of things. Pepe, on the head of my father. Darius was arrested. That's true. I told you, Pepe. You read my letter. That's true. But I told you. After that, it fits. But after that, nothing fits. Now tell me what happened. Pepe, let me go, please. Tell me what happened. Shall I bite your neck to refresh your memory? No, Pepe. Tell me. Uh, you hear? Tell me the truth. I'll tell, I'll tell you, Pepe. I'll tell you everything. Well? Slimane planned it all. Slimane? Well, then she never got my letter. No. He, he told me to come to you. Go on. He thinks you'll come down. And then? The hotel is surrounded. They're waiting for you. Did you see the girl? No. Why didn't she come up here? He told her you'd been killed. What? That's what she thinks. She thinks you're dead. She... She's leaving tonight on the Ville d'Algier. Slimane planned the whole thing. So they are expecting me, are they? Well, they will not be disappointed. Oh, you can't do it, Peggy. You can't leave me. I won't let you. You'll be killed. I won't be killed. And if I am... Blame it on the cat. It's for her. You're throwing away your life. Let that be combat. That's it. In his letter, Inspector Slimane told me how Pepe left the Casbah. He's going now. Pushing his way through the narrow, crooked street. Down the steps toward the town, toward the boat. Hurrying, tumbling. His eyes hot and feverish. If only I had known. If only I could have cried out. 
Go back, Pepe. Go back to the cows by where you are safe. I will come to you. Pepe, go back! Hello, hello. This is Inspector Slimane. I have just had word that Pepe Lamoco is leaving the Casbah. Ines told me. Withdraw the guard from the hotel. He is not going there. Ines says he is heading toward the docks, the Ville d'Algier. Surround the boat. Take every man you've got. Don't let him get off that deer. Hurry, will you? Give me that ticket. Here you are, sir. One passage from the Ville d'Algier. You can just make it. Thanks. Put up your hands, Pepe. Uh, you see, Pepe, we meet at the appointed time. Put the handcuffs on him. No, no. No, Slimane. Not yet, please. She may see me. Not here, Slimane. As you wish. I cannot refuse an old friend. Let me wait here until the boat leaves. It's not too much to ask. I can't get away. Very well, Pepe. I know I can trust you. Oh, Pepe. Pepe, I did it. You might have got away, but I told them. Pepe, don't hate me. No. Don't cry, Ines. I was crazy. Because I love you so. I love you, Pepe. Well, you only did what your heart told you. So did I. <laughs> The boat was prepared to leave. I stood at the rail, still looking toward the Kasbah. The dirt and decay of the place were forgotten. It seemed to shine white and clean in the sun. Andre was at my side. I couldn't trust myself to speak to him. We're about ready to leave, I imagine. And Gabby, do you hear me? I'll make you forget, Gabby. I'll make you forget everything. He still didn't understand. I didn't want to forget. The boat began to move. Below me on the dock, Pepe was looking for me along the rail. And I didn't know it. Until I received the letter from Slimane. A strange, halting letter of a man who was ashamed. Pepe stared up, he said. Searching every face as it passed hoping that our eyes would meet for just that split moment when he could tell me that he lived and loved me. But I didn't see him. It is leaving, Pepe. Shall we go? No, not yet, please. There, there, I see her. She's at the rear. She... Gabby, Gabby, Gabby! She cannot hear you, my friend. Gabby, Gabby, Gabby! Gabby! Get him there! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! He cannot get away! Don't shoot! Gabby, come back! Come back! Gabby! It's Pepe! Gabby! Gabby! Hear me! Gabby! Pepe! Look out! Gabby! 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 Oh, oh, you fools! You fools! I told you not to shoot! He was not trying to get away! Pepe! Pepe, look at me! Is it bad? You are man. Well, you're learning, you're learning to shoot much better. <laughs> I am sorry, Pepe. He thought you were going to escape. Eh? Escape? And so I have, my friend, Gabi. It was over soon. The boat turned and swung into the current, and Pepe lay there on the pier. Oh, Pepe. Pepe Lamoco had left the Kazbah. Before our stars return for a curtain call, here's our fashion reporter, Libby Collins who tells me she wants to talk about something that's out of fashion. It's an attitude some of us used to have, Mr. Kennedy. Remember that little phrase, well, I guess I'm just naturally hard on clothes? Women used to say that a while ago, but I doubt if you'd find anybody admitting it today. Fabrics are precious now, and it's a real duty to be easy on our clothes, to make them last. After all, you know, getting good wear isn't just a matter of luck. 
But it can be a matter of luck, Libby. <laughs> it certainly can. When you stick to luck, you steer clear of things that really are hard on clothes. Strong soap and cake soap rubbing. Things that make pretty washables wear out before their time. There's no harmful alkali. No cake soap rubbing with gentle Lux care. So your dresses and blouses and sweaters will last longer when you Lux them. It's care experts advise. More makers of nice washables advise Lux Flakes than advise all other soaps put together. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. Our personal formula for the right kind of evening in the theater is a play like Algiers and two stars like Loretta Young and Charles Boyer. Loretta, you know that Charles has now become a producer, too. Well, of course. The whole town's talking about it. It's quite a scandal. Hmm? What? Uh, have I done something wrong? Well, Charles, they say you have only one telephone. That's all. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty drastic, Charles. I, I don't know whether the other producers will approve. <laughs> How many secretaries do you have? None. You push button? None. This is a revolution. Well, the picture hasn't got a chance, I Oh, guess. no, it'll just be a sensation, that's all. <laughs> I thoroughly agree with your ideas of simplifying the business, Charles. The main things are still the story, the actors, and getting the camera in the right place at the right time. You're not giving up acting yourself, though, I hope. No, no, as a matter of fact, I'm working for myself now in this picture. <laughs> up to now, Charles, you've committed the cardinal sin for a producer. You haven't once mentioned the name of your picture. Oh, <laughs> It's called Flesh and Fantasy. Well, you'll be sure and invite me to the opening, won't you, Charles? Well. And what is your play next week, Mr. DeMille? One of the most unusual stories filmed in Hollywood this year, Loretta. It's the 20th Century Fox screenplay, The Pied Piper. And our stars will be Frank Morgan, Roddy McDowell, Ann Baxter, and Ralph Morgan. The Pied Piper was a best-selling novel before the picture was made. It's an adventure drama. The story of an elderly gentleman and a group of children in their attempt to escape from the war area of France for the safety of England. But there's inspiration as well as adventure in this play. And that's why we've picked it as our Christmas presentation. Well, I know your audience is going to like it, Mr. DeMille. Good night and thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. We'll see you two again sometime. Soon. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theatre presents Frank Morgan in the Pied Piper with Roddy McDowell, Ann Baxter, and Ralph Morgan. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> It's Christmas Seal time again. Remember that every Christmas seal you buy helps to stamp out tuberculosis. So buy all you can. Gene Lockhart appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers Studio. Heard in tonight's play were Isabel Jewell as Inez, Charles Seal as Jean Vier, Norman Field as Andre, and Jeff Corey, Griff Barnett, Fred Mackay, Noreen Gamil, Kelly Flint, Don Peters, and Crayon Denton. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. Our Lux Radio Theater production of Algiers, starring Charles Boyer and Loretta Young, has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Flakes. This is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear Frank Morgan, Roddy McDowell, Ann Baxter, and Ralph Morgan in The Pied Piper. Here's a gift to add to your Christmas list. Give Vims the new vitamin mineral tablet. Vims give you all six essential vitamins and three minerals. Get Vims in the gay new Christmas wrapper, ready for mailing at your druggist. VI for vitamins, double MS for minerals. Vims. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.